Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. You can only go so far in ServiceNow development or administration without knowing about Glide system events. And even if you're an architect, it pays to know some of the useful use cases. So stick with me and learn about the power of events. Now we're not talking about event management here, we're talking about system events, which Docs describes as special records the system uses to log when certain conditions occur and to take some kind of action in response to those conditions. Now if that sounds generic and high level, I like to think of it as a play in American football. That is to say, real football. The play is your workflow or script that's running. The crowd is other components of ServiceNow watching and waiting. And the ref is a command in a script to create an event. The flag on this play can be thought of as an event, and it can be loaded with parameters. In our case, the event name and any two parameters of our choosing is fired with the gs.eventq function. Once an event happens, the crowd responds in various ways, and that's the beauty of events. Different parts of ServiceNow can react in their own way to the event trigger. Let's consider some other events in a football context that might warrant reaction. A touchdown, where we'd send it the current play, the player, and the team. And a timeout, where we send the event queue the timeout event, the current play, the team, and the start time of the timeout. Now there's three things I want you to know about this tool. Number one, it can trigger notifications. Number two, it can trigger script actions, which is basically an event-based business rule. And number three, it can be launched from any kind of script or workflow. Let's build an example that showcases all three of those. The first thing we'll do is register an event. That's really easy. We just give it a name and a description. Also, do the people who come after you a favor and fill in where you intend this event to be fired from. Don't be like smug old Rory Fenort here thinking everything is fine so long as you understand what's going on. Now that we've got an event, I've gone ahead and created a notification. Now remember these three things about events and notifications. Number one, they can be the trigger for the notification instead of a database transaction on a specific table. And even when doing so, you can still add conditions about the record in question. Number two, through the advanced view of the notification form, either of the event's parameters can be used as the recipient. And number three, the parameters of the event can also be used as variables in the subject or message of the email. Now before we test this, I also want to set up a quick script action. If you've never heard of a script action, it's basically a business rule that triggers on an event, instead of a database transaction. You tell it the event and what to run in the script. In this example, I've linked it to the incident.special event that we created earlier, and all I'm telling it to do is generate a log statement. So now that we have a notification and a script action set up, it's time to see what happens when we fire an event. Events can be launched from the trigger event workflow activity or through the GS event queue method in any server side script. Let me just open a scripting interface. Here I'm using Explorer, which is a free developer tool for ServiceNow by Whitespace Studios. It also happens to be the single most downloaded app in the ServiceNow ecosystem. I did a video series on it that should be popping up right in this corner about now. I've got a script to find all the tickets assigned to Robert Fedoric and trigger the incident.special event for each. Notice what I'm passing as parameters, current for the current record, the user ID, and a text message. What happens when I run it? First let's check the event log. Since I had two incidents assigned to me, I'll see two iterations of the event. Remember, this is the flag on the play. Now let's see how the crowd is reacting. Here's the out box. Remember, we did no transactions on the incident table. These notifications were fired purely because of the event, and furthermore, used event parameters to figure out recipient and structure of the subject line. Now let's see if our script action worked. If it did, I should find my system log has two entries, one for each of my assigned tickets. And there they are. So there you have it. Use workflow or scripted logic to trigger events, which in turn trigger script actions or generate emails triggered by the events. Yeah, but Robert, when am I ever going to use this stuff? This feature is indispensable for two reasons. First, when you need an extra layer of nuance that the condition builder just can't provide. As a matter of fact, back in 1912 when I was learning ServiceNow, notifications didn't even have a condition builder, and we had to script firing conditions for ourselves via events. Don't believe me? Just look at the incident events business rule. Second, this is critical when your notifications are either ad hoc, like, surprise, you guys are getting audited on these records, or based on time. WTF, this ticket is 120 days old, fix this! And in the end, events are about power and nuance. Yet another tool in your disposal to build inspiring solutions on ServiceNow. 
Did you enjoy this content? If so, it would really help me out if you filled out the survey in the description below. And also, if you need ServiceNow guidance with the passion and understanding demonstrated here, don't hesitate to contact me.